Let's look at the more basic features that you are going to commonly be working with when slicing a file in Cura. Your profile has already set your layer height. We are going to leave that be. We're going to leave our walls be. We're going to leave our top and bottom be. And we're going to look for infill. This is a very commonly altered category in your profile. A 3D model is exactly that. It's three dimensional. That means there is space inside that model. And we need to tell the printer what to do with that space when it builds this model. Infill is the amount of material inside this model. Your 3D printer will not simply fill this model up and create a solid object. It will print a three-dimensional pattern inside the model so that it can make it not hollow and provide strength without wasting a ton of material or taking 10,000 hours to print. The amount of infill you need varies from model to model depending on its size, dimensions, weight, and how much strength you need. Let's have a look at what infill density and pattern look like and how changes affect them. The most common number you are going to adjust is the infill density. For many models, the infill pattern won't matter so much. But for some more complex models, the infill pattern could matter quite a bit. Let's look at the density. Cura will default to 20%. We will have a look and see what 20% in the cubic pattern looks like on this model. To do that, simply press the slice button. It may look the same, but you are now looking at your sliced model. You will see some important information has shown up. Cura estimates your printer will take one hour and 26 minutes to print this model and utilize 12 grams of filament. Let's now press the preview button and have a look at how this model will print. The amount of infill is your infill density. We chose 20%, so 20% of the space inside this dog is infill. You may say, wow, this thing takes a long time and that's an awful lot of infill and an awful lot of material and the dog's just gonna sit on my shelf and not really do anything. So we can lower this infill density to say 10%. Now you'll notice he went away and the slice button is back. It's because we made a new change and we have to now compute the new model based on our current slice change, which is the infill being reduced to 10%. You will also notice there's a blue arrow here. This means we have made a change that is different from the default setting of this profile. If we click that blue arrow, it will put it back to the default setting, which is 20%. So we want 10% and we are going to slice. And would you look at that? Our time is now one hour, 11 minutes, and our material has drastically been reduced to only nine grams. Grabbing hold of our layer slider, you will see much less of the inside of the dog is made up of this infill. Now, you're curious about infill patterns. If you click over here, you will see a ton of infill patterns. Currently, we are using cubic. Another popular infill pattern is grid. Grid is a strong, dense infill pattern. We will click on grid and we will slice again. Now you will see the pattern is a grid. Looking at the print time, it's roughly the same, and the amount of material used is roughly the same. So I wouldn't be too concerned over which pattern you use for this particular model. However, there is a special infill that was only introduced recently, and that is known as lightning. Lightning infill is used when you need to reduce print time and material usage as drastically as possible. Lightning infill is also the weakest pattern and should not be used in models that require strength. Lightning is a good infill for large prints with large hollow spaces that require a tremendous amount of infill. And it's utilized in models that typically won't be under a lot of stress. So we press the slice button and you'll see that the lightning infill has reduced the time to an hour and five and only six grams of filament. 
the Lightning infill utilizes the absolute minimum amount of infill, providing infill only in the places that require support inside the model. In other words, if there is a spot inside the model that simply cannot be printed because it will overhang, causing the printer to print on the air, the model will add the infill to that spot to allow it to have the potential to print properly. This drastically reduces the amount of material used to print a model. You will see right here on the head, this is the inside skin of the head, and you'll notice that it needs to close the dome of the head, but a 3D printer cannot print on the air. So it is going to create lightning infill off the walls that grow towards the center of the printer, and then it will build that dome of the head over this lightning infill. That's drastically different than the previous setting, which is cubic, that is going to add that infill to throughout the entire model, whether it's needed or not. Grid and cubic are very typical infill types, and 8 to 12 percent is a very typical infill density. Most models do not need 20. What I would do is experiment by putting in different numbers, hitting the slice button, and simply going over your preview and seeing what the model looks like. If it looks to you like there's a reasonable chance it will print and have the strength to survive the environment this model is going to be used in, then go ahead and give it a print and see how she goes. If you have issues with weakness or issues with printing, you could always increase that infill density. The ultimate goal is to find the correct balance between strength and efficiency where you're not wasting tons of material or having an unnecessarily long print time while still having the strength and support needed for a proper print that will withstand the use you have planned for that model. Let's have a quick look at how density affects the inside of the model. We are going to choose grid as it's an easier pattern to see and reduce our infill to 5%. Click on Slice, tilt our model, and notice our print time of 1 hour 5 minutes and 7 grams of material. Click on Preview, and this is what 5% of grid infill looks like. Let's now switch to 25% and hit Slice. Notice your material usage has gone up to 13 grams time to 1 hour and 35 minutes. Grab your preview and pull it down and look at the difference of 25% grid infill compared to 5%. You can see how much more material this is using and how much longer it would take to print this. However, you can also see how much stronger this model would be with these settings. Looking at something between 25 and 5, such as 15, you will see a much better balance of strength, print time, and material. Keep in mind, this is a very small model. When you're working with larger, more complex models, the time differences between these settings can be quite drastic, and you will want to spend some time optimizing that for that particular model, so you're not wasting tons of time and material unnecessarily. Ultimately, when you're satisfied that the print looks acceptable to you and you feel confident that it will print successfully, you can go ahead and save it to your disk as a G-code file and send it to your printer. Over time, with experimentation and experience, you will become more and more confident with making these adjustments and be able to better predict what settings you need for printing success. Early in your 3D printing experience, experimentation and practice will help you get to that point.